missed in three. My oh, no, you missed oh, no I didn't even miss it. You didn't miss it. You didn't miss it, Alan. Hmm? You missed two meetings. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the school committee meeting of October 12, 2021. I would take a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Moved by Ellen. Second. Second by Amanda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. Moment of silence. Thank you. As always, I want to thank EBCAM for their time and energy in making sure that our meeting is televised for the public. Thank you, EBCAM. And tonight we have a scheduled report from the East Bridgewater High School Student Advisory Council to the school committee. Good evening. Good evening. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Alex Shea. I'll be um, subbing in for Lucy tonight as she couldn't make it. Um, I just have a couple things I want to go over. Uh, we did have a couple reports come in from each of the schools, so there is a, a lot from everyone um, to get everyone involved. A couple things coming up. We have a lot of um, PTO fundraisers. Uh, October 18th to the November 5th, we have the PTO Cup Cupcake Charlie fundraiser. Uh, also in October the 22nd, we have the PTO uh, Candy Bar Bingo. And um, then on the 29th, the grade two character parade will be held. So that's very exciting for our central schoolers down there. Um, for the middle schoolers, um, we encourage everybody wears pink on Fridays in October to show support for breast cancer, cancer awareness. Um, this will be kind of for all the schools, but for middle school, this is what we got. And then for on October 25th, we are bringing back Rachel's Challenge to the Mitchell School. So that's so exciting. I remember doing that when I was in middle school back when um, and then on October 27th we have picture day at the Mitchell school so that is also exciting um, up here at the high school we have a very exciting week this week is our homecoming week um, we have a couple of our uh, spirit days this week today was superhero day tomorrow pajama day um, Thursday is Viking pride uh, also during Thursday after school we will have our powder puff game and our football game for homecoming um, and then on Friday is going to be the Breast Cancer Awareness Day. Um, we also have our field hockey cancer versus coaches game, which will be very good. All money uh, will go to support breast cancer um, made that night. For district-wide, all staff, um, the, we put the pink t-shirts to support breast cancer in their mailboxes. So everybody should be on the lookout for that. Um, and then those will, can be worn this Friday. And like we said, in Fridays in October. Also coming up, we have Trunk or Treat on October 27th, which will be run by our kids up in um, the high school in NHS. So that'll be right here in the parking lot. That'll be very exciting. And also on the 27th, we have our Halloween party run by the Key Club. Um, so yeah, big, exciting month this month. Excellent. Alex, are you a senior? I am a senior. Yeah. How a senior year going so far? It's going, I think it's going pretty well. Of course, like a lot of things due to COVID, but I think overall our district is handling it very well and I'm happy with how everything is running and how everything is going smoothly on just from my perspective. Great. Great to hear and I hope you get a semi-normal senior year. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Any questions for Alex? <clears throat> All right. Superintendent's Corner. Alex, thank you. And it was nice to have uh, uh, you guys reach out to the other schools. I'm glad that we're doing that and, and um, I know the principals are very happy about that. So thank you. Uh, a couple of, just a couple, I got a, a COVID update for you. Um, so I'm going to pass these out to you. So we've had the vaccination ban, and you'll see the dates. They were here on uh, August 26th, um, September 16th, and they were here, uh, here on October 7th last week, and where we are on the vaccinations on those. Um, and we're going to do October 28th, second dose only for our J and J for adults, um, and it should be two people for second dose. So we've got our vaccination van um, going. We're waiting for, and we're we're still looking at um, the booster shot for our, our adults, um, and we're waiting to hear when students um, ages five to twelve 
will, or 5 to 11, will be able to get the vaccination. But I do want to just say that the, the vaccination status, we have approximately, um, approximately 700 of 940 students, 944 students have been vaccinating, vaccinated according to our Board of Health and the numbers that we received from the state. Um, we are trying to, uh, we're trying to meet with Sue Malloy and we're trying to cross out if we have any doubles on there just to make sure that we don't overlap. Um, we have 309 out of 342, but the, uh, the teachers at the high school, um, we're at about 96%, 97% here. Um, when you look at all of these, this is all staff. These aren't just, this is certified and non-certified is 342. That includes um, uh, cafeteria, custodial, um, anybody who works here at the district, whether they're part-time, full-time, um, and what they're doing in here. But um, I can tell you from uh, my, on the certified side, teachers are well above 98% throughout the district. Um, so doing very well. The students are at 74% um, here at the high school. If you look at 700 out of 94, it's about 74%. Um, and I think that uh, we talked about what the governor said a couple of weeks ago, or I sent out um, some messaging that the governor, or that the commissioner Riley wanted us to send out, but I know that, um, that you were gonna make an announcement uh, uh, right after I got done. We are start, we still are doing test and stay. I was, um, ran a meeting today for the Lighthouse, which is the South Shore Superintendents. I can tell you most everybody is doing test and stay in the South Shore and it's working out very, very well. Um, a couple are doing pool testing, um, not too many. Uh, it would be the smaller districts that have everybody either in one building or in two buildings that might still do the pool, but not very many. Um, but the whole Brook, uh, Duxbury, uh, Mansfield, um, Cohasset, Hull. It, we're all in this, West Bridgewater, um, all working on test and stay. And it's working out very well. Um, and the pool testing, again, you can see, if we do that, it's very difficult here at the high school to do. Um, and we'll probably put it in place for November 1 for the lower groups, but other than that, everything's going pretty well. And um, we have not gotten, um, uh, extra nurses or the state nurses to come in other districts have they're a little bit bigger or they're in a hub where their numbers were higher than us of COVID positive so those numbers um, or those school districts would get the help first however I think we're doing very well I, I you know Sue Malloy the rest of the Board of Health Karen Clifford work very well together we're in constant communication uh, Karen Clifford's doing a terrific job making sure that if we do have a positive, she lets our school community, community know. We know where the positives came from. Um, and she's doing a great job doing the check backwards and finding out how many kids may be involved or may not be involved. And the test and stay is actually working. I heard from other districts, you know, that, that some people had to, some districts had, had to stop sports or, you know, uh, had to not go to uh, a sporting event someplace else because there was a full quarantine on a team. We've been very good and I think our kids are doing terrific. Um, and that's, that's really what I have on COVID, unless anybody has any questions. Tim, I think that you yeah, want to just mention. No, and I just want to bring up, you know, um, for the good of the committee and the good of the community, I know, um, you know, for sure masks in schools has been a hot button topic this fall um, all across the Commonwealth. And the committee, you know, dodged a bullet, if you will, having to make a decision about where to go with that in September when Desi stepped in and said, you know, masks are, are mandated. I've heard from pretty much the entire committee about this topic over the last month and a half. And I would say that there really doesn't see, seem to be any support from the committee to unmask our kids given the current guidance from DESE that we're under, whether it's that certain members may not feel that it's safe to have the kids be unmasked in school, certain members may not be comfortable with the idea of only having unvaccinated kids be unmasked in school. Regardless of the reason, there just doesn't seem to be an appetite within this committee to entertain the idea right now of unmasking our kids in school. So we're not going to, you know, worry in the immediate future about, um, you know, that that possibility. As the year goes on, if guidance changes, if numbers change, if we get to a point where we feel like there can be an equitable, safe, reasonable solution for our kids, I think we're more than willing to have that discussion and make a decision. But right now, there just doesn't seem to be a path that, you know, the majority of the committee is really comfortable moving forward with. The, the policy is up on the front page of the website. Uh, we've talked about it with everybody. That's your policy. Your policy is that masks are going to be used in the district. I don't think, um, and that's fine. Uh, 
and like I said, you know, we talked about it. If we go to January 1st, you have a meeting the following week. If you want to change your minds, you can change your minds or get through flu season and see what happens and then um, talk about it again. So, so I, I can give updates on the COVID sure. as we go forward, but I would say that entertaining the mask right now would be off the table and we'll stop talking about it. Sure. Could I ask a question about the test to stay? Is there any, anything from the state that indicates they may start opening it up to kids that were close contacts outside of school or are they really sticking to from within school? <clears throat> Not sure I understand. So the test to stay program is only for kids that are close contacts within the school community. Like the kid sitting next to you in math class, you know, has said. Yeah. So if you were at a soccer game and your teammate tests positive, is there any chance that we may see the program broaden so that kids can in general just stay in school regardless of where yeah. they came from? So out? when if that is that happened to us last year, right? We went to a, a school district where I think we played football or soccer. Uh, no, uh, basketball. They called us the following day. We had someone out on the court, someone had COVID. We need to test everybody. And that was like late, I think February. Um, right, no, it had to be March, February and early March when we started that second season of sports last year. They called us, we tested some kids. So we know, um, and we used, and we did the same protocols. So. If, if somebody else calls us and says we have a problem or Sue Malloy calls down and said there was a dance uh, or there was a cheerleading competition up in Quincy, and I think that happened a year ago, um, they'll just come down and we'll find out who the kids were that were at the competition and we'll bring them in and we'll test them gotcha. and go from there. So I, only still in specific circumstances in that case, so not just a general blanket. I don't, it, 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 I don't think it, it lends itself to that right now. Okay. What we're seeing is, I, I have to say, the parents have been terrific. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want their child to go back home. They don't want their child not in school if they can avoid that. Right. They're wearing masks, taking extra precautions throughout the day. Um, we've, had, we had, we've had students in the lower grades test positive after a weekend. We call the parents immediately. There could have been, an, there would have, you know, it could be by 8.30, just saying at Mitchell School or quarter to nine that the child gets off the bus, all of a sudden we find out, boom, uh, this is what's going on. He wasn't that, it, he didn't have enough time. But we do call parents immediately, um, and we do say we're going to test and stay. We did have, and I do want to make, uh, we have corrected any of, uh, any of the mistakes that we had prior to this. We did test and stay a few students who did not sign um, a permission slip or their parents didn't sign the permission slip. We try to go very fast when we do this and we try to be very accurate with the kids that are sitting around or with someone who may have tested positive for COVID. Um, and when we do that, our nurses are terrific and they do check, they check the list, they balance themselves out and okay, well, yep, this student has the permission slip, this student is ready to go. We have made mistakes, we've corrected that since then. Um, we have uh, more nurses in place now. Uh, we are still looking for one more nurse. One more? Um, one and a half. One and a half. Um, but we're getting some people to have applied and, and hopefully we get another one in place sooner than later. Right. We're going as fast as we can to get those. Um, so that's our biggest, that's our biggest issue. If that, if, you know, it's getting people to help us test and say, and Karen always gets on the state um, webinar when they speak to the school districts uh, along with myself and then she'll stay on and um, we have our, our you know the school liaison that goes back and forth um, for Commissioner Riley and you can I have her I can text her on my phone right now and she would text me right back they are right on it they don't they don't waste any time and if you need help they try to get help here so if we found that we had an outbreak we could call them and they would send in available nurses throughout so um, that's pretty much on COVID, and we'll stay with masks till January first, or until you make a de to make another an alternate decision. Letter uh, from the East Bridge Weather, uh, the EBEA, the Education Association, requesting enter into negotiation with the, with, uh, with us, with you as the East Bridge Water School Committee, um, to bargain our new contract for another three-year successor contract. Um, we are going to we are setting up some dates. We'll have some early dates possibly the last week of October, first or second week of November, just to do the ground rules 
just to get and get a bunch of dates on a piece of paper and then we will send them out to everybody. Um, it's two people from the committee. Um, usually it's the chair and someone else who wants to be on this. I don't know if anybody, uh, if you've already done that. Um, John is usually there the entire time. I'm there the entire time. Uh, Dr. Williams is most likely there all the time. Sometimes she'll go in and out on different things and Jay Fallon sometimes will come in. Mm -hmm. Uh, depending on the, the language that we have and what we're looking for and what they're looking for. Well, usually what we do is, um, so Tim went to them the last time, and because if we both go, then it becomes an open meeting. But if you, if you, do, if you go without, that's what, when, I, when I did it with Gordon, only one of us went. We didn't both go. And when you went, I, I bowed out and let you go. I didn't go. Okay, and for two. But like if you couldn't go, then I would go. Okay. We can figure it out. My understanding is that unless we're meeting as a meeting of the subcommittee, the two of us can be there because we're less than half of the committee. Yes. But it is a subcommittee. It's not. <laughs> Just because we're appointed to the committee doesn't mean we can't do committee business. We'll get a clarification on that. Yeah, we can have two at the meeting um, because it's, it's not your meeting and it, you're not under, there's no, you're not being called to order. Okay. Um, and it's less than that. That's we just have a, what I was told. We have, I know, but we have a six man group, so the two can come. Usually we don't have that because we don't have that only until really at the end. Some of you have not been involved in negotiations. Some of you have. Um, you may want to be in all of them. They can get tedious and they can get long. I mean, you were there a couple of nights uh, last year, Amanda. Um, they can get very long and a lot can come down to um, language, maybe a word. Um, I know that Dr. Williams wordsmithed uh, with um, a committee for um, our evaluation, our new evaluation tool that we use this year, and I think they wordsmith for about three weeks on two on two sentences on what we, what we how it was reading to us and how it was reading to the EBEA. Sometimes it's uh, um, R is the um, and. So um, we wordsmith it and we do the best that we can and we have everybody take a look at it. We don't, um, we don't go into anything without checking with everybody, just so everybody knows. Um, and usually, as you know, it comes down to the financial package and whatever that financial package looks like. Seems like we just did it. Yeah. <laughs> I said that to John the other day. I said, we've got to get some dates and I thought John was going to fall out of his chair. <laughs> so we have that coming up and then um, we always we always highlight people that um, uh, who are retiring or or we always talk about our new hires um, at the beginning of the school year but Kathy Nicandros will be retiring from the East Bridgewater Junior Senior High School um, she's a math teacher here she also uh, was the first EBEA president that I did work with here at the district um, so I have accepted her retirement however you know, she was one of the first people I did get to work with uh, when I got in here. So you know, I wish her the best of luck, and I'm sure it's time, and, you know, you get to that point, and she's ready to move on, whether to different endeavors or just to maybe move down to the Cape and sit in the sun a little bit. So that's all I have, unless you have any questions for me. Dr. Williams. Um, I just wanted to update the committee on Parent Square. I know I've briefly mentioned um, it to all of you in past meetings, but... Um, the communication survey that was sent out to all families back in September, uh, we had 384 families uh, that responded to the survey, so not a, a huge amount, but certainly um, gave us some really good insight to the challenges that families are facing with uh, communication uh, home. Uh, some of the, the top ones uh, being that uh, parents prefer certain modes of, of communication, text messaging, uh, emailing. Um, and the inconsistency of receiving those. Maybe one member of the family's receiving it, the other one's not receiving it. Uh, sometimes nobody's receiving it uh, because of uh, the disconnect between uh, the email going out through school brains and, and families receiving that. Um, it was also, I mean, it was nice to see that we had 80% of the families that said that they have no issues with the communication um, other than the timing of them and you know the abundance of, of some of them coming in um, and being able to manage um, that would be uh, an ease for families. So with Parent Square, it has satisfied um, 
for the most part, you know, all the issues that parents brought to light uh, and the fact that uh, once they sign on to Parent Square, they'll be able to uh, receive their messages via email, uh, they can receive it via text, or they can just go right onto the app themselves um, and view the information coming through. The only time it will override their choice is if it's an emergency, um, and then it will go out to everybody in all modes. Uh, the other thing that we were pretty split on is uh, the consistency in which um, things are sent out. Uh, about half want them as soon as they become available, and the other half want them in a digest format where they're coming to them, they're coming through at you know a certain time every night. Uh, so parents will have the ability to choose um, in the settings um, how and when they uh, receive their messages. So now we're working on the timeline of the onboarding. Um, so at this point in time, the entire administrative uh, staff has had an overview of Parent Square uh, because we will start to send out messages once we have our parents on. They'll first be sent out from the superintendent's level and the principal's level. Uh, and we'll make sure that everybody's acclimated to it before teachers start using it as their mode of communication home um, to their classrooms. Uh, it will also give us the ability that all of the groups affiliated with the district will use Parent Square as well. So any communication a parent is getting from the school district, whether it be from an administrator, from a teacher, uh, from a coach, from an advisor, uh, from a, um, a nonprofit group that's affiliated with the school district, it will all be within Parent Square. Um, you know, the biggest issue I had shared with you over the time of the pandemic, um, it was nice that we've moved away from hard copies and we've become uh, electric in a lot of our uh, communications, but the abundance of emails, and I know myself as a parent, like to go back and try to find something, forget it. You know, you're scrolling through uh, tons of emails over a number of dates to try to find that. So having one place that they'll go and uh, look for things. When we're looking for volunteers, when we're looking for permission slips, uh, all that can be done through School Brains. It even has abilities to uh, conduct our parent conference signups through there. There is a lot. We will go slow um, with you know how we're relying on Parent Square. We'll actually have some overlap of messages being received simultaneously, both until we feel like we've got a good percentage of parents uh, within Parent Square. Uh, so now we're working on the communication, uh, which will go home by the end of this week letting parents know about Parent Square uh, and how this is uh, what we'll be using and encouraging them to sign up and they'll keep getting notifications. Uh, we'll put it on our social media uh, between now and Christmas break. We figure that's a good chunk of time to get people on board. Um, we'll do some test uh, um, messages within Parent Square so people can make sure that they're receiving everything accurately. We have a November um, professional development coming up for staff. It will be a workshop model where they'll be choosing many sessions to attend. All staff members must attend one of the Parent Square trainings um, so that they can be acclimated to how to send messages out to parents uh, as well. So it's our hope at this point in time that when we return from um, the December uh, vacation break that we will be uh, <coughs> utilizing Parent Square as our communication home platform. Um, it will be a way for parents to receive communication. Uh, we will also use it internally um, from a platform of communicating with staff. Um, at this point in time, the communication to students from teachers will still be through Google Classroom. They seem to find success with their communication, so we won't change that uh, for them. So, so that's kind of uh, where we're at with uh, Parent Square. It's nice we've connected with two school districts. Silver Lake has used Parent Square. Uh, for I believe five years uh, and Norton is now going into their second year so uh, Kristen Kylie our communications media uh, coordinator has connected with both of the the people in those districts so it's been a nice connection for her to kind of uh, learn what's working and what's not working in, in the best way for us to um, roll this out so that it's most successful thank you you're welcome questions for Gina Thank you. John. So I, I feel like I just gave this update a, a week ago, two weeks ago. Um, it's, it's really uh, nothing has uh, changed too much uh, from a couple weeks ago. On the first, the, the operating budget summary, uh, non-salary, uh, as of October 8th, we have an available balance of 1.1 uh, 1, 
1,179,000. And as a comparison, last year we had a, an available balance of 1,160,000. So if we're using last year as, as a, a, a comparison, we're, we're doing uh, as well as we did last year. And as you know, last year we came in under budget. So again, uh, I want to reiterate that I'm fairly, feeling really good about the non-salary budget. Salary budget, um, again, is similar. Uh, we have an available balance of 15982000 uh, A non-salary uh, salary balance last year at this time of 15463000 million It's a little higher compared to last year, um, only because I still need to make some adjustments to grants and things like that. So that, that will come down once, once I have a couple days to be able to make make the make some adjustments and transfers of expense but again I, I budget I I model it out for the rest of the year and we're, we sh we are looking good on the next page uh, the revolving fund balances again not much has uh, significantly changed here from the last time I did this um, school lunch uh, on target to where we were last year. Circuit breakers up. Um, school choice at, at uh, 845,000. Um, athletics, pretty similar to last year at this time. Preschool, you remember when I said I'm going to need to make some adjustments to expenses. Pre this is one of those areas. So the, the, it's showing a negative balance now, but once I transfer some expenses, it, 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 it will not be. I hope they have, have all that done within the next couple of weeks. Um, school building rental is a little hot, is higher than last year at this time. It's at 172,000, which is good because we have had some uh, significant um, issues in our auditoriums. Uh, so plan on spending uh, some of that money to fix uh, the, the high school uh, screen. It needs to be replaced. Um, the Mitchell School projector died. That lasted about 25 years. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that needs to be replaced. Uh, so, you know, both of them combined, that's probably about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. A new projector of that size for a large auditorium runs about fifteen thousand. The new screen in the auditorium will run about nine thousand. So, the problem is getting parts yep. mm -hmm. it's 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 crazy out there the production of, of, of everything uh, line paint to, to line the field the soccer fields uh, you, you just can't get it cameras mm -hmm. I mean it's it's a struggle um, so moving on before and after care uh, that's at 71,000 that will uh, continue to increase throughout the year so like I said, thing, uh, things really haven't changed much from last meeting. And, uh, we're really, things are, financially speaking, I think we're doing well. Uh, we haven't had any uh, big ticket item surprises, so feeling confident about the budget and getting ready to start the new budget. Any questions for John? As always, thank you, John. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, MASC. So you have in your packet, um, well, there's two parts to the MASC conference. Um, the first is to choose a delegate to represent us at the conference, and the second part is to vote on the non binding resolutions for the conference. So the MASC annual conference is on Saturday, November 6th. It is virtual slash in person, but I believe there's only virtual spots left. Is there anybody interested in representing us at this? Amanda. I will volunteer. Oh, thank you. Were you going uh, regardless of, of this meeting? Uh, yeah. I okay. had to go virtually. It was, it was my first. Okay, meeting. you're going virtually. So, okay. Yeah. I haven't been to a conference in a couple of years, All so, right. you know, I just got excited. Absolutely. Okay. So you'll represent us as the committee. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Um, so I would take a motion to appoint uh, Amanda Colgan as the school committee representative or voting delegate to the annual conference, the MASC, MASS. So moved. Moved by Ellen. Second. 
Seconded. Seconded by Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And you have in your packet uh, the 2021 resolutions proposed by member districts and the MASC board. Um, I'm not going to read them individually. You've all had them in your packet. If anybody's interested in having a discussion about any particular item, we can do that now, but I would like to vote on them as a group unless someone wants to pick apart specific motions. Can I just go back to this? What's this that? form, it has to go, so Barbara's on vacation. I know. Oh, okay, we'll okay, good. Moving on. Any specific discussion or questions about the resolutions? All right. I would take a motion to uh, pass and mass the uh, non-binding resolutions for the MASC MASS annual conference. Moved move by Amanda. Okay. Second. Second by Ellen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> public comment. Is anyone here for public comment tonight? All right. Thank you. So action items by the committee. Um, I would take a motion to approve the school committee minutes of September 21st, 2021. Moved by Amanda. Second. Second by Ellen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Take a motion to approve accounts payable warrant AP refund dated 9-29-2021 and 15-SV dated 10-6-2021. So moved. Uh, moved by Ellen. Second. All in, uh, second by Amanda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I take a motion to approve payroll warrant 14 PS dated 9 29 2021. So moved. Moved by Ellen? Second. Second by Amanda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Take a motion. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Take a motion to uh, adopt the energy reduction plan as part of the town's green communities application for designation, and it is enclosed in your packet. Uh, so moved. Moved by Amanda? Uh, second. second. Second by Ellen. All in favor? Oh, can I hear about this? Can it, does anybody know about it? Yeah. So we join the green communities to save money, and, it, and they'll, they'll start sending money back, like the national grid. Or it, mm-hmm. It's supposed to be saving energy. We're changing all the light bulbs here at the high school right we now. We talked about this a few months ago, didn't we? Yeah, we started. Yeah, we're not. We're almost done. There's a couple more to, to be done, and then all the schools will go. Anything that we do that's energy efficient, like our new boiler system at... East, um, at Central <laughs> at Central School will come into this. The windows, if we put new windows in, we get them with a different tint. Anything that we do now, um, we will save money, hopefully, and we'll get money back to the town. It's equivalent to what you would do at home. Right, that's why I use National Grid. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like a mass save thing. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And Dr. Williams has reviewed the home education plan for the attached students for the 2021-2022 school year. Superintendent Legault rep- rep- recommends, <coughs> excuse me, recommends approval of the home education plans. So the motion to approve the plans. Moved by Scott. Second. Second by Ellen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two final announcements before we adjourn. Three. Three. Um, just a reminder, the next CPAC meeting is October 14th, which is this Thursday at 12.15. And then um, I did connect with Alex right before the meeting, um, and he did mention that there, um, it's Breast Cancer Awareness on Friday. The girls lacrosse game Friday night at 545. Um, it's senior night for the girls lacrosse team, but they're also raising money for cancer research. There's several moms in town that are currently battling breast cancer. Um, they will be selling, I just lost the email, the text. They're selling t-shirts and they will welcome any snack bars that will be put towards um, cancer research. So that's Friday night at 545. That's girls lacrosse senior night and there are a lot of senior nights coming up this next month for all of the teams. And then the last announcement is Viking Sports Parents on Sunday, October 24th from 530 to 830, rain or shine at the Belmont Street Soccer Fields. They are doing the second annual jack-o'-lantern extravaganza. It's $5 a person. Um, If it rains, it'll be a drive-through. Last year it snowed um, and people still walked and (laughs) and saw all the pumpkins. It was was a pretty successful event. The money goes towards um, senior athlete scholarships for graduating seniors. And there are two sign-up sheets right now for students. One is to carve a pumpkin for a VSP point, and you can carve up to two pumpkins for your VSP points. In order to qualify as a as senior athlete for the scholarship, you need 10 points, and you also will have to write an essay. And then there's also a sign-up um, sheet for cleanup following the event. So 
Those are my announcements. Excuse Thank me, you. the date and time one more time. Okay. The date is Sunday, October 24th from 5.30 to 8.30. Thank you. Thank you. So I, ha I, I forgot an announcement. So t this week we have, right now we have the bonfire outside, which was terrific, very warm, very hot when we lit it, and it was terrific. We have a lot of people up here tonight, um, a lot of kids on the field, and we love that and we enjoy that and we started it um, the year i came in and, and homecoming has gotten bigger and we try to get all the kids from k through 12 just to be a community involved the last few football games that we have had at home have gotten uh, parents are dropping kids off that do not belong at the high, that are not high school students that are under the age of seventh grade so 11 down and you're dropping students off we are not a babysitter someone is going to get hurt i don't know how i adamant i can be you have young girls running around old boys or older boys running around it is not lit up all around this building there are cars driving through there are kids riding bikes we've asked bikes to not be up here we had a, the police have called me and said we cannot have that there's people coming across people cutting through someone's going to get hurt we have both principals out there the athletic director out there dr williams is here because her sons compete I'm here, not every game, but we're, we're not babysitters. Have we sent them a message to I'm going to. I'm going to, but I want to make this very, this is adamant. Mm -hmm. Somebody is going to get hurt. I want your children here. The place is packed out there right now, and there are more kids than high school students out there. We want more high school students out there tonight because we want you involved. But if you look at the parking lot, and that's where I went just to make sure we were doing it right, and I have a police officer up in front here at the doors so I can't, don't have people coming in and out. He, he said he can't believe how many cars are here this evening. So I know that parents brought their children to this because they want, there's a lot of neat things going on. They get to see the band. They get to play um, some of the games we have out there. They're getting uh, the tickets to get a, a T-shirt or, or something that says ED, and they get some swag. They cannot, we cannot continue to do that type and have that, that type of behavior of dropping your kids off. And I get it. We're going to drop them off and we're going to run up, you know, to Target or we're going to go out for dinner and then we're going to come back and get them. Because we do let the kids in free. And we want the kids to be part of the program. We want the kids to see. We can't control it. And it's getting out of control. And I'm not trying to scare anybody when I say a young girl and an older boy. I'm telling you. These things happen. It's happened in districts around us. And it's not going to happen here. Kids were in this building last week. I don't know if they're EB students. I don't know whose students they are. They get in here, and if a custodian leaves it open because they're driving the Zamboni through, and he doesn't shut it behind him because he's got to come back around on that Zamboni, a kid can get up to the second floor. A student can get up to the second floor. But more importantly, there were students here till way past the game. John Shea. Patrick Leonard and the custodian stayed until all students were out of that parking lot. The game ends at 9.45. We shouldn't have anybody in that parking lot past 10 o'clock. They were here at about 10.20, 10.30. We can't have that happening. Somebody's going to get hurt, and it's going to be an issue. We ask, that you're, we ask that parents please come to the game with your child if, they're the, if they are 15, 14 and below. If they can drive then they can come to the game. If they're a varsity athlete, they can stay or JV athlete. But I will say this, um, we have, I'm not gonna allow students under the age of 14 without a parent to come through the gate. So I'm gonna let it go tomorrow, or the game is uh, Thursday. Thursday night. Thursday. I will be at that game. If I see it get out of hand, I'm closing it off. There will be no more D zone. There will be no more student section. It will be high school students only, those who can drive themselves, and will lock it down. Because I do not want a parent calling me the next morning and saying, what happened? Mm -hmm. 
or how could you have allowed this to happen? It's scary. I mean, you look at it right now, it's dark out there. I mean, we've got lights on all over the place, but it's still dark. Um, so please, I just, I, you know, I, I don't know how else to say this, please. If you want to come to the game, it's free for kids. We let you in. They're getting a free hot dog tonight, free bottle of water out there. I mean, we're doing everything we can to be supportive and to support the kids, our athletic programs, the, the events that we have for the kids at every building. This is the first time in, uh, we've do, we do this every year since I've been here. We started the bonfire and, the, and this week of events. This is the first time, we've got Meg McGovern, we ordered t-shirts for every school we have, for every teacher to wear, every staff member to wear on Friday for breast, care, for, for, um, breast cancer awareness, but just being part of a team. Every staff member, every teacher, every administrator will have pink on on Friday. And many of the kids, I think, believe are wearing pink, correct? Kids are wearing pink up here. So I'm hoping to say that the other schools are wearing pink, and I think that we are pushing that out. Alex Wright, we're pushing that out. Ms. McGovern's pushing that out. I, I would hope that NHS is pushing that out to all the schools. So that's where we're at. And so I just I implore that uh, our parents send people in and to help us out or to come with your child. Watch the game. And we'll have more people. And it's very difficult. Some people don't, you know, you leave on a Friday, you might not want to come back for a game. That's, and I get it. And, and I understand that. But as an administration team, they've got to be here. So we just ask the parents as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last note is uh, we are scheduled to meet two weeks from tonight on the 26th for the evaluation um, training from Dorothy Presser. I have reached out to her to ask if we can meet at 6 and get started then. I have not heard back, uh, but I will let the group know when I do hear back from her. So I'm hoping that the meeting will begin at 6 o'clock. Do we know about how long that will be? 90 minutes, I would imagine, okay. ish. It's not a super long meeting, but it's thorough. Mm -hmm. so. We just, if the time changes, we just have to fix it up at town hall. It's not posted yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Tim, do you want me to um, have uh, dinner or anything? Snacks would be great. Dinner. dinner. <laughs> yeah, we'll in talk, the past, we'll talk, we'll talk in the past, we've had. No, they'll bring up, they'll bring up sandwiches. Sure, that'd be great. Have them. I mean, I'm sure the committee would love that. <laughs> yes, we would, since we'll be here over supper time. Would you, committee? <laughs> Uh, any last comments or questions? Take a motion to close the meeting. So moved. Moved by Ellen. Second. Second by Amanda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good night, everyone. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, the meeting.